Welcome to the Man of Recaps. This is Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Remember, at the end of the first movie, sexy Colin Farrell revealed that he was secretly working with the evil wizard Grindelwald, but our hero, Newt Scamander, used one of his magical creatures to capture him. But turns out he wasn't just working for Grindelwald, he was Grindelwald in disguise. It's not Colin Farrell, it's albino Johnny Depp. So now, Grindelwald's imprisoned in America, but it's time to transfer him over to Europe. But wait, that's not the real Grindelwald. He pulled the same trick again, and now Grindelwald is free. Over in England, Newt's commander is still an awkward animal lover, but now he must face a new type of fantastic beast, a girl. This is Lita Lestrange, who we briefly learned in the first movie was Newt's high school crush. But now she just got engaged to Newt's brother, who's a serious ministry horror. In fact, the ministry wants Newt's help to track down the creepy orphan kid he met in the first movie, Credence. Yes, remember, because he repressed his magic, it turned into an Obscurus, a super strong cloud monster. We thought he died at the end of the first movie, but turns out he survived, and now the ministry wants to kill him before Grindelwald can recruit him. What is Grindelwald's deal? Well, he's got sort of a classy, calm demeanor that makes him seem like a good guy. But his philosophy is that wizards are superior to muggles, and should be ruling them. And for some reason, Credence is a big part of his plan. They think he's the long lost son of a pure blood family and is part of some prophecy. Now there's someone else who wants Newt's help too. It is young, sexy Dumbledore. He also wants Newt to go find Credence, but not to kill him, to befriend him so he becomes a good guy. But Newt's commander's like, wait a second, why am I in this movie? There's no magical animals involved. It's like, yeah, we accidentally committed to calling this series Fantastic Beasts, so we're gonna have to squeeze some in there. And indeed, Newt has a really cool apartment that's basically a big magical animal rescue. Newt's adventures rescuing magical creatures could have been a cool spin-off series or something, but in this movie, it's irrelevant to the plot. Speaking of plot irrelevance, Newt gets a visit from his new American friends, Queenie Goldstein and Jacob Kowalski. Remember, Jacob's a muggle, so at the end of the last movie, they had to give him the rain amnesia, but his love for Queenie was too strong, it didn't stick. And now these two are gonna get married, and they came to England to do it because in America, wizard muggle marriages are illegal. But Jacob's acting really weird, and pretty soon it's obvious Queenie has him under a love spell. He does actually love her, but he didn't support the marriage thing because he doesn't want Queenie to get in trouble, and she's like, babe, if you really loved me, you'd help me break laws. So she she goes off to visit her sister, Tina, who Newt had kind of a romance with last movie. But Tina's real mad at him right now because in his brother's engagement announcement, there was a misprint. It said it was Newt that's marrying Lita. And turns out Tina's on the job in Paris looking for Credence. So it's a bro road trip to win their girlfriends back and maybe stop Grindelwald along the way. So welcome to Magical Paris, where they're having a carnival. Credence is in France looking for his birth family, but instead for now, he's found a new girlfriend at the circus. She has a rare curse where she can turn into a snake, but one day it will be permanent. And her name is Nagini. So yeah, Voldemort's future snake used to be a person. Anyway, for now, Clarence helps her escape, and now all the magic animals are on the loose. So Tina does not find Credence here, but she does find this totally random dude. So when Newt gets to town, it's like, oh, missing magical creatures? That's something I could actually help with. But his first priority is finding Tina, so he tracks this random dude down, but turns out, oh, he's a bad guy who locks him in a cell. But then, with no explanation, he decides to just take a nap. They all decide to ignore this for now, because the giant flower lion is rampaging Paris, and Newt actually gets to do some magical creature wrangling. Now he tries to tell Tina, he's not actually engaged, but because he's an awkward guy stuck in a poorly written movie, he just can't come out and say it. And then they're distracted by a Grindelwald attack. He sends his dirty bedsheets to cover all of Paris. This is how he announces there's a big Grindelwald rally tonight because there's no Twitter yet. So now the plot finally begins as Newt and Tina have to stop Grindelwald by um, doing something with Credence. Wait, why are they even in this movie? And just as everyone's about to fall asleep, whoa, what's this? We're going back to Hogwarts. Yes, yeah, sexy young Dumbledore is a brilliant professor, but the Ministry of Magic is mad at him. It's like, yo bro, you're the only one strong enough to fight Grindelwald, you gotta do it. But he just says, I can't. Now we kind of know from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows that Dumbledore and Grindelwald used to be best friends and implied lovers. And back then they made a magical pact never to fight one another because I mean, what are the chances one of us would become evil? So now Grindelwald wants to recruit Credence, but we still don't fully know why. And he's trying to tempt him with truth of his real identity. So now Newt and Tina must save the world with an epic adventure to the French Ministry archives looking for Credence's birth certificate. Newt finally explains he's not really engaged and tells Tina she has eyes like a salamander, which she takes as a compliment. So yeah, these two are made for each other. Just then Lita shows up looking for her family records because the suspicion is Credence is a Lestrange. But the family records have been moved to the crypt. She does join Newt and Tina though, and the evil librarian's mad at him, so six the cats on him and it's a moving bookcases scene. But now Newt has a bigger cat and oh, they ride this thing out of there. Apparently it can teleport. So now we're at the Lestrange crypt and turns out random guy is here too with Credence and Nagini and also Jacob. If none of this sounds familiar to you, it's because this is the scene where you finally fell asleep. So random guy finally explains who he is. He was the son of a nice family, but the evil daddy Lestrange liked his mama, so put a spell on her to steal her. And she died giving birth to a daughter 
Mayor Lita Lestrange. This guy loved his mom, so he swore an unbreakable vow to kill the person that Daddy Lestrange loved most. But turns out that was not Lita. He was a bad dad who never loved her. He did eventually have a son that he loved, and to protect him from this guy, he put him on a boat for America. But when that boat sank, everyone thought the Lestrange son was dead. But turns out it is Credence, and he's alive. So sorry, you seem like a nice kid, but I swore an unbreakable vow I have to kill you. I probably should have just sworn the vow to kill your evil dad himself instead. But now what's this? Lita Lestrange has a double secret reveal. She was on that boat to America where her annoying baby brother never stopped crying while the cabin next door had a nice quiet baby. And oh, she did a baby swap. And unfortunately the boat sank before she could swap back. So she accidentally killed her baby brother and that's haunted her her whole life. So as for Credence's real identity, well, he's Rey from The Last Jedi. He's just a nameless orphan like he always thought. But now it's time for the Grindelwald rally. Jacob finds Goldie here, who's interested in Grindelwald because of his progressive views on wizard muggle marriage. Yeah, he's fine with it. He sees muggles as less than wizards, so they should be able to do whatever they want with him. But he eventually gives his big pitch about why wizards should rule muggles, and turns out it's about World War II. It's like, yeah, Muggle technology's progressing too fast. Pretty soon they'll destroy the world. We have to rise up and conquer them to save it. So Grindelwald makes a cool ring of fire. Like, hey, if you want to join me, come on in. And Goldie wants to do it. Jacob's like, yo, girl, he's clearly evil. But she's like, no, it's the only way we could be together. Credence wants to join Grindelwald too, because apparently he knows his real secret identity. And Nagini gets her first line of the movie where she's like, no, don't do it. But Credence doesn't listen to her. And this would be much more emotionally impactful if we got to know her as a character at all. And apparently this was Grindelwald's whole master plan to get Credence to willingly join him on the dark side. Lita Lestrange might join Grindelwald too, but she looks at our Scamander brothers and says, I love you. Ooh, which one is she talking to? But none of that matters anyway, because she was only pretending to join Grindelwald so she could kill him, but she fails miserably and Grindelwald kills her, which again would be much more emotionally impactful if we got to know her or Newt's brother as a character at all. So Grindelwald figures now's the time for a confusing CGI finale and he makes a fire dragon to destroy all of Paris. But now who's here to save the day? It's Nicholas Flamel. Mel, yes, the legendary alchemist who created the Sorcerer's Stone. For random reasons, the gang crashed at his house earlier, where we got to see that he did indeed unlock the secret to eternal life, but not eternal youth, which kind of defeats the point. But now he leads the remaining wizards in a massive counterspell to destroy Grindelwald's dragon, and our wizards all work hard, making their best constipation faces, and oh, the day is saved. Now back during the rally, Newt noticed that Grindelwald wore a suspicious piece of jewelry. And so a magical creature actually gets involved when the Niffler steals it. And so our heroes return to Hogwarts, even though I'm not really sure who most of those people are. Newt's like, hey Dumbledore, my kleptomole stole your ex-boyfriend's necklace. And so now if Dumbledore can destroy it, he can finally go fight Grindelwald. Right on, man. Well, sounds like you could use some fantastic beasts as backup. So in the next movie, Newt's commander is going to continue to pretend to be the main character. As for Grindelwald, he reveals that Credence does really have a double secret identity. This time he's Rey in The Last Skywalker because turns out he actually is from a famous wizarding family. His real name is allegedly Aurelius Dumbledore. Yes, this random chicken you found is actually a phoenix, the animal of the Dumbledore family, so that proves it. He convinces Aurelius that his brother Albus is a bad dude, so now Credence is fully on Grindelwald's side with his magic powers unlocked. And that's where the crimes of Grindelwald comes to an end. If you like this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.